Calculus is broken up into two big ideas, differential calculus and integral calculus. Differential calculus, the study of instantaneous rates of change, or the derivative, and integral calculus, the study of areas, accumulation, all that can be calculated with the integral. Both of these big ideas are centered around the idea of the limit. It is very important that before we begin, that you understand what it means for a function to have a limit at a particular value. So intuitively, let's think about the limit. The limit of a function as x gets closer to a is the intended value of the function. That is, where the y values are headed as the x values get closer to a. Let's say that again. The limit of a function as x gets closer to a is the intended value of the function. That is, where the y values are headed as the x values get closer to a. As always, a picture often is better explained than words, so let's look at this very simple graph of a function f on the xy plane. This is my x value of interest a. And so what we, what we are interested in is where is my function headed as my x values get closer to a. So if I pick x, this x value right here, well first of all let's plot this point right here, which we'll say this y value is l. Okay, if I pick this x value which is um, to the left of a, it gets mapped to that particular y value very far from L. But if I pick a value, an x value close to A, or closer to A I should say, then I get a y value that is closer to L. Likewise, if I pick an x value to the right of A, I might get this y value. But if I pick one even closer on the right of A, I get a y value that's even closer to L. So the idea is as my x values get closer and closer to A on either side of A, my y values get closer and closer to L. Alright, that's the most basic idea behind a limit. Now, this picture may be misleading because what you might think is as my x values get closer to A, then my y values get closer to f of a, or the value of the function at a. And in this case that would be true, but it's not always true. What actually happens at a is often of little interest to us when evaluating a limit. Let's look at another example. So here's a similar graph, except this time my function, although is defined at a, is not defined um, so f of a is not L in this case. f of a may be uh, 1, whereas L may be 3. Okay, so I have this function who's, who at a I'm 1, and uh, so f of a is 1, which is not equal to my L. So the question is, what is the limit of this function as I approach a from either side of a? So remember what the intuitive idea is, it's where my function is headed or its intended value. And if I were to draw those rectangles again, extend them over this way, you would say that as x gets closer and closer to a on either side of a, my y values are still getting closer and closer to l. It makes little difference that the the value of my function is never L. It's what it is intended towards. So in this case, the limit of F as X gets closer to A is also L. Okay, so I think what we need is to make sure we have some notation. Some good notation and some bad notation. So in those examples before, we could write this to express what we meant. The limit of f as x approaches a is equal to l. So let's read that in words. The limit as f 
I'm sorry, the limit of f as x approaches a is l. Is the intended value of my function as I get close to a on either side of a? That's our intuitive understanding of what the limit is. Now, some bad notation that I often see when talking about this limit would be this. This is an example of bad notation. It makes no sense to say the limit with nothing next to it because we are taking the limit of a particular function. And as a matter of fact, we will be taking the limit of lots and lots and lots of different types of function. So what goes there is very important to the whole procedure. Now, um, given a particular function, you may be interested in limits at lots of different values of x. So to not have as x approaches a or the particular value of interest, it again makes no sense. So you must have both the function that you're taking the limit of and where you are looking at that limit in order for it to be good notation to describe what is happening. Now let's look at an example. Another example, I'm going to have to zoom in. So bear with me as I do. And then I, once I zoom in, I'll have to refocus. There we go. So let's look at this example right here. There we go. And clear. Okay, so in this example, let's let our x value be 5. This is the one that's of interest. So we are curious, let's write our notation, about the limit as x approaches 5, which I mean from either side of 5, of this function f. So if we look at this, as I get closer and closer to 5 on either side of 5, my y values get closer and closer to negative 2. See that? So my function is headed towards this point right here, although it never reaches that point. The value of my function at 5 is actually negative 5, but that's not the question I'm asking. The question I'm asking is where is my function headed as x goes to 5, and in this case, it's negative 2.